I first saw one of these cameras a couple years back at CES. I saw a lot of people using them and they looked very awesome and I definitely wanted one, although I never actually jumped the gun. But today I have one. We have the Fiu Tech Pocket 2 stabilized camera with a 3-axis gimbal and 4K Ultra HD video quality. So as you can see by just looking at this, it is a 4K stabilized camera along with a screen which is effectively on a gimbal that fits right in your pocket. Like the whole thing, it's pretty amazing. The camera does have a 130 degree wide angle lens so it's great for using as an action camera or vlogging on the go. It has an aluminum alloy body along with a microphone as well as a speaker so you can actually take a look at the clips you recorded. We are looking at four times digital zoom so you can zoom in nice and close. It can take 12 megabytes pixel still images as well as 4k video it does support a 512 gigabyte micro sd card so you can record a ton of video although the battery only lasts you about 220 minutes and that's in 1080p at 30 frames per second so if you're doing 4k you're definitely going to cut that down to what like 150 or something but if we're a little bit conservative here and say 120 minutes at 4k that's still two hours and that's a long time and if you want to recharge it it takes about 1.2 hours with a 5 volt 2 amp charger and of course since this is small enough to fit in your pocket you can just pop in a battery pack with you and be ready to charge wherever you go although i do find it very weird that they say this is a 4k 60 camera but they only tell you how much battery you get at 1080p 30. A little bit sus, huh? With that being said, the box is looking nice. Definitely getting me excited here. I mean, just look at that little guy. Look at him. Just look at that little guy. Look at him. The camera in your pocket. I mean, that's crazy how far we've come where we have a gimbaled camera that fits in your pocket and it does 4K 60. Inside the box, have some cards to find more features on YouTube and Facebook as well as Twitter and Instagram, a quick start guide, a warranty card. Okay, and here we, that's crazy. The camera's like so tiny, but what is this? Is this a charging case? Okay, it's not necessarily a charging case, but it is a case that you can definitely charge in. All right, it's not magnetic or anything, which is a little bit disappointing, but it does have this little clip here that's pretty satisfying to clip into place. We have a USB-A to USB-C charging cable, a lanyard so you can wrap this around your wrist so you don't drop it, and then we have the actual Pocket 2. Man, this thing weighs in at 0.28 pounds. Like, this thing is so light, so small. Look at this. It's literally in the palm of my hand. That's insane. Like, this thing, it feels like quality, too. Now, I mean, looking at this from your point of view, this probably looks cheap, but remember, aluminum alloy body. This thing feels solid. So up here, we have the 130 degree wide angle 4K sensor, which is extremely tiny. We have the LCD display, so you can actually use it as a viewfinder as well as take a look at the footage you've already recorded. We have the littlest joystick in the world to adjust the gimbal. That's awesome. Along with a shutter button down here. Very clicky. The button actually is the cheapest feeling thing so far. Over on the left side, a micro SD card slot, 512 gigabytes supported. Over on the right side, a power button along with a speaker and microphone grill. Down on the bottom, a quarter inch thread to put it on a tripod. Nothing on the back. And I mean, seriously, look at this thing. This is like the smallest gimbal ever. Like it's, it looks so cute. All right, so now I'm gonna pop in a micro SD card so we can actually get this thing started. So let's get this thing powered on. Oh, look at that. Oh, whoa. Instantly, the camera started moving. It is balanced. Let's move it. Oh, man. Moves so smoothly. Just look at this thing. What? That's insane. Okay, let me actually face it toward me. Okay, so right now I have it facing me. By default, we're looking at 1080p 30, which is what they rate the battery life at. So we're looking at 220 minutes. Battery is almost fully charged, so that's nice. With my 32 gigabyte micro SD card, it says we're gonna get three and a half hours of recording. So that's actually really good. Right now it's set to follow, so it smoothly follows wherever I point it. Like that is so smooth. Okay, so one single tap starts recording. So right now I'm recording. As you can see, it's very smooth. You're listening to the raw unedited audio along with the raw unedited video. I mean, look at this. I mean, I have it, like look how close this is to my face. You guys see that? Like, look at this. And you can see my whole face. That's intense. And if you take a look at this light, it actually flashes green while it's recording. I feel like it should be red, but you know, at least we have an indicator light. Now, if you want to switch modes, you just tap the power button. So right now we're in video mode, tap the power button once. 
we're in four times slow motion mode at 1080p tap it again switches to 16 by 9 photos so let's actually take a picture here all right quick shutter very nice so by default the camera is in follow mode so it'll follow wherever you point it and it'll glide there smoothly although if you hold down the joystick it goes into lock mode and actually stays exactly where it is no matter how you tilt the gimbal which is very cool once you let go it goes back to follow mode so it'll move with you as you go and one of the cool things about it is no matter where you have it facing so for example i have it facing to the right double tap the button it'll recenter directly straight very easily now this actually does have wi-fi capability so if you hold down the shutter button for three seconds it'll pop open the wi-fi menu so you can connect to your phone and now the cool thing about this is this little tiny screen is actually a touch screen so you can actually interact with it so for example if you swipe left we get all the different modes. We have photo mode, video mode, slow mode mode, time lapse mode, panoramic mode, very nice. We have three little dots here. Tap on that, you can adjust the resolution. We have 1080p 16 by nine at 30 frames, 48, 50, 60, and 120 frames. And even all the way down to 24 frames a second. Just takes a little bit of time to get there. Then we could swipe down to 2.7K, which maxes out at 60 frames per second. And then we have 4K 16 by nine, which also maxes out at 60 frames per second. So we're gonna switch into that now. As you can see, 4K 60 and we're ready to go. 32 gigabytes is getting us roughly 50 minutes of recording time. Swiping to the right, we actually go to the recordings that we actually have and we can play back. So by default, the camera is in follow mode, so it'll follow wherever you point it and it'll glide there smoothly. Um, okay, I'm pretty impressed. The speaker, it's not the best ever. It's a little bit tinny, but it is loud enough so you can actually hear everything that's going on in the video. So pretty impressive with this little body. Now, if we swipe down on the screen, we go to the setup menu. And right here, we can see our battery life, 61%. We can have Wi-Fi toggle on and off. anti flickers at 50 hertz, but I'm gonna tap that and turn it to 60. We have key tones, so you can turn it on so it beeps when you do stuff. If we swipe up, we have different modes. We have follow mode, we have recenter mode, we have all follow mode, so I guess it'll follow left and right, but regular follow mode. Oh yeah, regular follow mode only goes up and down and stays centered when you go left and right, so that's cool. We also have pan mode. So it'll actually pan left and right, but stay steady up and down, very cool. We have flip mode, so it'll actually flip towards you, which is actually what I'm gonna want. Let me see if I can lock it. Okay, there we go. If you want to do selfie videos for vlogs, you turn it to flip mode and then you can hold it on and have it locked on you. Very nice. We also have smooth mode, so I guess it'll be smoother when you do stuff. I mean, it looks about the same. It's very smooth though. And then finally, we have motion mode. So as you can see, it's very easy, very user friendly, and I'm really liking this. I am severely impressed so far with how small this thing is and how capable it is. Hopefully the video actually looks as good as it looks on the little display. All right, so it looks like the camera is actually very cool, but there's also an app that gives you more functionality. So if we go on our phone, we could download the Fiu Cam app and open it up. We're gonna choose the Fiu Pocket, confirm. We're gonna make sure we turn on the Wi-Fi, so we have to hold down the shutter button for three seconds. Okay, we're on, and now we'll connect. Oh, we put in the numbers that it gives us, okay. It's not activated, more operation can be used after activated. I hate that. See, this is the second gimbal I've had that did this, and I don't like that. Now, the thing is, it was seemed like it was working fine without activating it, but I guess we'll activate it. I don't know why they want you to download their app to activate it. I mean, this is a different brand too, but it's still doing the same thing. And oh, that's awesome. I can actually see a live view right now. So I can actually pan this around with a little joystick on the screen. What? That, that's awesome. Okay, so that's very cool. I can start recording. Hey, everybody. How you doing? Oh, I'm like really impressed with this thing. Stop saving video. Okay. Oh, that's cool. I can actually tap on the video and have it point where I want it to point. That's cool. We have the zoom. So let's see how this looks. Okay, the zoom's not, oh, do I tap it? Oh, okay. Whoa. Okay, let me go up a little bit. 
So right here is that 4x zoom. Actually looks very good for being a digital zoom like that. You can mirror the image. I don't know why you would want to do that. I always hated that. So although I don't like that you have to download the app to activate the camera, which didn't seem like you actually needed to, so I'm not sure if you actually need to in this scenario, the app is actually useful and I can definitely see myself using the app, so it's not the biggest deal in the world. I just still don't like that it would be a requirement though. That's a negative. So with that being said, right now I'm in 4K mode and I'm locking it now, so I'm moving it around and it's staying directly on me very smoothly. I can move it closer to me. Like this. I mean, seriously, I'm moving up and down, left and right, and it's staying right on me. That is insane. Now if I let go, it unlocks and now it'll pan around as I move. So with all this being said, I'm going to head outside and actually try this out in the real world because so far I am extremely impressed and I can't wait to see it outside. Alright guys, what a way to end this video other than with some nice beach action. Let me flip the camera back to me because I figured out you can actually do that. All you have to do is triple tap the button a little bit slow. If you do it too fast, it'll just recenter and won't work. But if you triple tap it slowly, it flips 180 degrees so you can either film in front of you or right in front of your face depending on what you're trying to do. Now that's really cool and it's very easy to use, especially look at this, I'm going to hold it down. We're locked up, so right now I'm moving it around. It's staying completely set exactly in the center right where it was facing. I'm gonna let go, and now it's in follow mode, so it's following exactly where I'm facing anywhere, very smoothly, like butter. I mean, take a look at that. Let me flip it back to me now. Now we're gonna spin around. Oh, as you can see, it's trying to catch up. It caught up, I'm gonna go, and it's catching up. But if I lock it on me and then move it, I'm trying to keep it steady, it's completely steady, it's perfect. So I like the way you can use this and how easy it is, but you could probably hear by now, hopefully over the water, I hope you can at least hear me too, because this is like a real life situation where I would be using this. Although I don't remember, I'm pretty sure it's not waterproof at all, so don't take it in the water. But as you can see, every time I press this thing, I'm sure you can hear it go tch, tch, tch. And that's annoying because if I'm using this and making a video that I want to post, I don't want to make it sound like I'm tapping on this all the time. There's a little dog. Follow it, follow it, oh, there's two dogs. And one other thing that I noticed is for some reason when I go into the settings, it actually kind of has a problem. I keep switching it to 60 hertz because I'm in the United States and I just realized I've been looking at, <laughs> okay, don't do that. When you're using this, look at the lens, don't look at the screen because otherwise it doesn't look like you're making eye contact. So this whole video probably sucks and the water's coming in on me right now. Yeah, look at that, very nice. Like, look at that, the video quality is amazing for this small camera. But like I was saying, I keep changing it to 60 hertz, and every time I reset the camera, it goes back to 50 hertz. So I'm not sure why. That's annoying because I need it to be 60 hertz to reduce flickering issues. But other than that, I'm really liking it. I mean, the video quality looks great. I mean, look at it. We got this nice blue sky, 4K60 right now on the beach. Like, what more could you ask for in this little form factor? Everything's steady. If I start running around the beach, actually, hold on. We got some sun in my face. Okay, so right now you can see me. I'm running on the beach. It should be steady, but I'm actually going to do it again for you guys, this time locking it, because it might make a difference. So, if I lock it on myself, we're locked, I'm running, it should be completely steady right now, hopefully. There's a little test right there. And of course, as expected, the camera is effectively useless at night. Unless you do some post-processing, then you have this. As far as the zooming capabilities go, there's a little arrows on the screen that you actually swipe up and down. Right now we're at 2, 3, and 4x, so this is 4x digital zoom. Looks pretty good for what it is, not bad, and then you can easily zoom back out. Like so, pretty cool. Something else that I noticed while I was playing around with this thing is when you swipe down for the settings menu, there's actually a bunch of other menus before you tap into settings. If you swipe over to the right, you actually get a mode for high quality or super high quality, and I of course switched to super high quality, so this is literally as good as it gets. 4K60 at super high quality resolution. Okay, then if you swipe it once more, you actually get this view, which is actually the narrow point of view. And if you tap it one more time, the water's coming after me, you actually get this, which is super wide. So it's an extremely wide field of view. So it's very cool depending on what you're recording. If you swipe to the left, you actually get face tracking, which I'm using right now. It's okay. As you can see, it's following me. But I mean, it's not that great. You literally have to keep your face in the frame for it to follow you well. And if you look to the side, it kind of loses track of you. And doesn't really follow you but you know it's cool to have depending on what you're doing swipe a little bit more you can actually adjust the screen whether you want it to be what you're actually shooting or if you want it to be full screen although the edges are going to be cut off you can also adjust the brightness which you can help you can also adjust the brightness if you want to 
You can also adjust the brightness. By default, it's on high. And they even have a pro mode if you want to get into all the different settings. But with that being said, I'm really liking this camera. It's very easy to use, very small, fits in your pocket, feels amazing. I just have to learn to, see I'm trying to triple tap to flip, but I'm doing it too fast. Okay, that time was too slow. Recenter, come on. Recenter. It's not flipping. There we go. See, sometimes it doesn't work when you want it to, so that's what I don't like. So, see, looking very nice, but you kind of get the hang of it. See, it's recentering again. Flip. Okay, watch. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. There we go. We got it. You got to get the timing right, and sometimes it doesn't work. But there we go, we got it. Overall, really liking this camera. If you're gonna pick one up, let me know how you're liking it. Let me know if you're putting it to use because there's a lot of stuff you can do with this thing and I mean, it's really awesome. Let's get out with this water right here. If I can flip it. There we go, flip it, come on. Is the water gonna come up? In to the sunset. What better way to spend the day?